another video. Today's video is going to focus on the synthesis of a compound called EBCN, or ethylene bis chloronitramine. Chloronitramines are very, very unusual in chemistry, and it's even more unusual to find one that is stable in storage at room temperature and pressure. Now, we'll only need a few things to synthesize this compound, those being the sodium salt of ethylene dinitramine, some distilled water to dissolve the salt in, and a source of chlorine. I have just a normal chlorine generator set up here with a one liter two neck round bottom flask fitted with a gas takeoff adapter attached to a tube ending in a pipette. And on top of the RBF, I have a pressure equalizing addition funnel that will be filled with 31.45% hydrochloric acid. This will be dripped onto some potassium permanganate, as you can see in there, by the purple color, which will generate chlorine gas, which will then be led through the solution of sodium ethylene dinitramine. I really don't have a better name for it, so that's just what I'm going to call it now. This solution will be held in this 50 mil graduated cylinder. We're just going to bubble the chlorine through this and eventually we should get a precipitate or oil of the product. The form that the product takes completely depends on the temperature. EBCN has a very low melting point and will melt from solid into an oil in just hot water out of the tap. Now, depending on if the solution upon formation of EBCN is higher than the melting point or lower, if it is higher, then it will be an oil, and we will see that come out of solution and likely settle either on the top or bottom. Uh, some might settle on the top because, you know, oils just do that. Um, and on the bottom, because it is denser than the solution it came from. Or we will get a crystalline mass, which means that the reaction solution is cooler than the melting point of EVCN. So, let's uh, go outside where there's a lot better ventilation than in here, and get this started. So here I'm just going to dissolve the sodium ethylene dinitramine salt in distilled water. I'm using about 50 milliliters here. It looks a little bit different, that's uh, just because uh, I have the stirrer in there. The salt is very, very soluble in water and dissolves almost instantly. Really an arbitrary amount here. I'm not really going for anything exact. I'll just do a few scoops of the salt. That way it's very apparent when our product precipitates out. Do one more small scoop and I'll call it there. Alright, so I'm just going to turn up stirring a little bit faster and make sure that everything is dissolved and I'm left with a crystal clear solution of the sodium salt of ethylene dinitramine then I will move outside. Sorry about the lighting, I preemptively moved my lighting outside before I realized I still need to film this, so please forgive me for that. This is gonna go, secure the screw bar, gonna add this to the graduate cylinder. Perfect. Well, it looks like it's a little bit under 50 milliliters, so it looks like my beaker's markings are a little bit inaccurate. That's good to know. Okay, now let's head outside. So here's the setup. Oh, can't really see it that well. Hang on. Ah, much better. Let me move that over there. So making sure that the stopcock is indeed closed on the addition funnel, I'm going to add the hydrochloric acid. I already have the uh, outlet tube in the solution of the salt. You can already see this, you can already see the acid fuming. It's fairly humid out, not terrible though. Let's go ahead and add it all. Just so I don't have to uncap it later. All right, and we are set to go. So with that being said, 
things out of the way. I'm going to, oh, actually, I need to put the stopper on there. All right, so now I'm going to lead the chlorine through the sodium ethylene dinitrine salt solution. This will form EBCN. Now that gas generation is done, we can see that we have some nice crystals in the graduated cylinder, both at the top and bottom. There was a little bit of oil at the beginning, but it quickly crystallized into the solid mass at the bottom here. There is also some on the pipette that I used to lead the chlorine into the cylinder. Now we just gotta collect it. Alright, it's so the next day, and now comes the task of separating the precipitated EBCN from the liquid. Now this is pretty easy. I'm just going to filter it and wash the crystals that are in the filter paper with some distilled water. Then I'm going to put it in some hot water, not boiling, and not, you know, mildly warm, but hot water. This will melt the EBCN and form a layer which I can pipette out and set on a cool surface to crystallize. Okay, here's the crude EBCM on the filter paper. Now all I have to do is put it into the hot water to melt it. Now this process serves a few purposes. Uh, it serves the purpose of separating the EBCM from any eDNA or ethylene dinitramine that may still remain because ethylene dinitramine is fairly soluble in hot water whereas EBCN is completely insoluble and uh, will melt and form a oil layer. It will also help uh, remove any sodium chloride or sodium ethylene dinitramine salt that may still be in the solid here. So let's get to that. Okay so here's the hot water. I'm reading about hmm, let's get a few readings. Uh, the highest I'm getting is 48 degrees Celsius, so that should be perfect. Alright, what I'm going to do now is uh, add the EBCN and we should see it oil out. All right, you can see stuff. Uh, oh, you can see stuff oiling out pretty nicely there. Just gonna give this a quick stir. And this really doesn't have too much odor to it, even though it is a uh, chloramine, an organic chloramine like a uh, tetrachloroethylene diamine. Nowhere near, absolutely nowhere near as bad as that. 
what I'm going to do now is uh, separate the off the oil once all the solid is melted and then I'm going to put it on a uh, room temperature watch glass. I'm not going to throw away um, this liquid right here because as you may be able to see there are quite a few droplets of EBCN on the surface. So that would be just product I'm wasting. So I'm not going to throw it away just yet. I'm going to let it cool down to room temperature and uh, let that solidify nicely. But for now I'm going to separate the oil. Alright, you may be able to see that pretty much everything has crystallized into a large mass of needle-like crystals. To make sure that I have everything out from the beaker that still has some of the EBCN oil, I'm going to add a few ice cubes. You can already see crystals of EBCN forming from the oil that was on the top of the mixture, as well as some crystals that are settling on the bottom. And add, let's say, one more ice cube, and then I'll call it there. What I'll do from there is filter that mixture of EBCN and water, plus some other stuff, and then I will get uh, a small second batch of EBCN. And that will improve the yield, though I'm not really calculating the yield as I really don't care much about it. So here's the EBCN after breaking up that large chunk of some nice crystalline masses, which are pretty much perfectly dry for most standards. You can dry it a little bit in open air uh, to get a nice powder. This will cake a little bit in storage, that's just because uh, EBCN tends to be sort of waxy in consistency, sort of like chlorobutanol if you've ever handled that. Now I'm going to do some tests to determine whether or not this is EBCN or just some byproduct or even eDNA. Well, the one on the right is the EBCN and the one on the left is the eDNA. Slightly different colors. Uh, the eDNA is just barely tan, just barely, and the EBCN is a bright reflective white color. So what I'm going to do is make up two solutions of sodium carbonate and distilled water and we will see whether or not the EBCN and eDNA dissolve. If the EBCN is really EBCN then it shouldn't dissolve. The eDNA should dissolve as it will form the sodium salt of ethylene dinitramine as you saw we started with. So here's the potassium hydroxide and the two large beakers behind right there. I'm going to add an equal amount of water to both and get it to dissolve. I'm going to try to not make these uh, too hot as I don't want the EBCN to melt and uh, give a you know, strange result. I'll probably go with about 30 mils each. Stir these to dissolve. And wait for them to clear. Alright, yeah, that's not, not warm at all. Perfect. Okay, let's start with the EBCN. Here's the potassium hydroxide solution, and in goes a small amount of EBCN.
Now I didn't really take into account any hydrolysis that may occur, but it's a pretty weak solution so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And it really doesn't look like anything is dissolved, so that's a pretty good sign. Okay, let's try the ethylene dinitramine. And same as the EBCN, I'm going to add a small amount of ethylene dinitramine. You can already see that a good portion of it has dissolved already. Well, of course, it's not going to dissolve as fast in a weak solution like this as it is in a strong solution like we used to prepare the sodium eDNA salt. Now, however, we can see that most of the solid has dissolved and all that remains are the large crystals of eDNA undissolved. Now, one definitive difference between eDNA and EBCN is their deflagration. Now, the deflagration of EBCN is a lot different than that of eDNA. EBCN, when it deflagrates, goes off with great violence, not detonating, but with a very fast and rather aggressive deflagration, making lots of noise. It also gives off some HCl vapors. Not a whole lot. Nothing, of course, like... Uh, tetrachloroethylene diamine, but, you know, it is something. So on the right there, I just put some uh, ethylene dinitramine. And on the left, I'm going to put the EBCN. Gonna move everything away real quick. Get my PPE. Alright, got my face shield down and fireproof clubs on. Let's do this. I'm going to start with eDNA. Or ethylene dinitramine. I'm just using a regular butane torch. You can see nice deflagration with a little bit of soot left behind. Now, let's try the EBCN. Yeah, just like that, it's all gone. It melts and then deflagrates extremely violently. Well, that's about all I have today for EBCN. I really hope you enjoyed. This was very fun to do. You can like if you want to, subscribe if you want to, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Without all of you guys, videos like this would not be possible. So thank you.